Hey everybody, this is Dave Farina from CosmosSafari.com and if you've been paying any attention lately to what's going on in the night sky, you might be familiar with the fact that there is a new comet in the sky. That comet is C2022E3. Uh, I'm going to be using some software today to kind of show you how to observe this. Um, I highly recommend that you check this out on Sky Safari. Um, I'm going to be working with this software to kind of show you what time of day is best. And that depends, of course, based on your latitude, um, where it's going to reach the point at which it's high enough to view. Um, it's going to be in the northern parts of your sky. And for me, it's going to be in the morning hours. Now, of course, uh, as it always is, Clouds are uh, in my area right now. I've been meaning to get an image of this comet. Um, it has a very distinct green color to it, which is super cool. Um, if you remember back a few years ago, kind of right around 2020-ish uh, time frame, there was the comet Neowise. Um, and Neowise was my first comet that I was able to get an image of. Um, I remember back when I was a kid, Hail Bop was a pretty amazing comet. My dad took me out at like three o'clock in the morning and we checked out hale -Bopp, and it's ingrained in my memory as one of the first experiences that I've ever had of astronomy. So, you know, if you've got kids, um, get them up early, get them outside, use the app Sky Safari. I'm using Sky Safari Pro today on my iPad. This can work on your cell phone, whether it's an Android or on an Apple device, it doesn't matter. And this software will just kind of basically take you to the next level because not only are you going to be able to show them where the comet is in the sky, and if you have a pair of uh, telescope or a pair of binoculars, um, you can definitely get a chance to see it. Uh, but you can also have the amazing power of Sky Safari to have more information to kind of learn beyond what you can just find, you know, out on the web. So the content that's here on Sky Safari, you can be rest assured that it's accurate and uh, up to date. So now I'm going to enter the tonight's sky section where Sky Safari Premium, a subscription uh, that is available through Sky Safari, gets you the most up to date information possible. And here we've got a great article written just three days ago on January 15th, and it's titled Catch a Comet where um, this article goes through the details about how to use Sky Safari if you're not familiar. We're gonna show you that a little bit today on the software, as well as just some information about it. Um, and all this background information is available to you um, right at your fingertips once you get the subscription version. Um, but if you just want to jump right on in, you can go here to the Tonight Sky section and you can learn all about any event that is happening up in the night sky, including comets like this one right here, C2022E3. And all you have to do is click on it and it will break down all of the information that is available. And you can also go to center this object in your field of view. Now, my current date is set up so that it is in military time, 24 hour clock. So uh, subtract 12 there, it's 4, 11 p.m. Um, my time. And as I go through hour by hour, you'll notice that the comet does dip below the horizon uh, effectively before it's dark outside. So nighttime observations of this are not possible. So keep that in mind. It's going to be an early morning one. And then it starts to rise back up. You'll notice that it actually is a circumpolar region of the sky uh, right up there. Uh, that is the North Star Polaris. And of course, the entire sky rotates around the North Star each night um, and does a 360 degree circle around Polaris during the 24 hours of the day. And you can then zoom on in and check out the comet and its location amongst the stars. Most stars uh, that you're gonna see here are named and that's because they're bright. Um, and as you zoom in more and more, you will get more and more stars visible to you. 
So this comet is just above um, the constellation of Hercules, just south of it, if you will. And probably the easiest way that personally I would use is to find Arcturus. And right there is Arcturus. You'll notice um, my time here is now 1 a.m. Uh, of course, by the time you're probably wanting to get up, if you want to get up earlier in the morning for Wharf, you know, so a.m., 5 a.m. is kind of pushing it. You'll notice it gets higher and higher in the sky, and you'll see more and more and more. And from there, you're actually going to start to see some other very bright stars like Vega and Deneb. And you can kind of look at this pattern of stars and get a good approximation as to where the comet should be with respect to them. And that's really where it's at, is, is being able to make those observations using the real night sky. Now, of course, with your phone or with the iPad, you can kind of hold it up to the night sky, and Sky Safari will actually help you find objects uh, that way as well. So, you know, you can hit the little compass mode and go into the AR, and then as you're holding up the device, it will, you know, move with you using the accelerometers in your phone or in your iPad, which is just awesome um, that that technology is out there and exists. All right, so I completely understand why you might not want to get up at four o'clock or five o'clock in the morning to see this comet. And rest assured that that will not be the case for very long. As we move forward through the rest of the month of January, we will be entering a time when you will be able to see this comet uh, in the evening sky and throughout uh, much of the beginning of February, you should be able to get a glimpse of this and possibly even see it without the aid of a telescope or binoculars. So let's take a look at that now. Um, once again, we're facing towards the north and we're going to now be traveling through time, not hour by hour, but day by day. Okay, right around 6.30 p.m., what you'll see is that the comet is right on the horizon by January 19th. But then day by day, slowly, you'll start to see the comet going up higher in altitude above the horizon, pass through Draco, and on toward the Little Dipper, also known as Ursa Minor. It actually lies right between the two pointer stars of the Big Dipper, Merak and Dubai, and the North Star itself, which is Polaris, which is pretty cool. And that will happen on January 29th. Now, it's not likely that we'll be able to see that naked eye at that point, but you'll definitely be able to see it um, if it is visible through a telescope. It's high enough in the sky at that point to make an observation. Moving on through to the 1st of February, it's now made its way through the part of the sky that we would consider to be a circumpolar part, which is visible throughout the entire night and on towards Capella. And this is where it starts to get interesting because as we approach February the 5th, you'll notice that now we get a conjunction of these two objects, Capella and Comet C22E3ZTF. So we now have them very, very close to one another, possibly even in the size that you could fit within the eyepiece of your telescope, depending on your focal length. And that's pretty neat. That'd be a sight to see on February the 5th. Continuing through time, as we go from February 5th to 6th, we're moving away from Capella, but now we're moving towards Mars. And as we get closer and closer to Mars, by February 10th, we are right next to Mars in the sky. And by the 11th, even closer. And once again, we get one of these conjunction events where Mars and the comet are right next to each other in the sky. So as we continue forward to the 12th, we'll be moving now away from Mars, but then once again, on to Aldebaran. So Aldebaran, of course, is the eye of the bull in Taurus, and it is also right next to the Hyades open cluster, which is a great place to look at, especially through binoculars or a telescope. So you'll be in a patch of sky that's fairly interesting once again by February 14th, and you can Share that with one of your loved ones. As we continue on through the 15th, 16th, 
17th and 18th will be heading towards Orion the Hunter's Shield. Now, as we approach this time in the month, um, we're going to start to notice that the comet's tail by this point will likely be waning because the comet's tail is formed as it gets closer to the sun. The comet actually gets two tails. One of them is an ion tail, which is always pointing away from the sun. And the other one is a dust tail. And that one kind of trails behind the comet as the debris is being left behind. So we hopefully will see this naked eye. There's no guarantees. We never know for sure with a comet what kind of brightness it will have. But if it were to have a brightness, my expectation would be early February. And once again, you can see this in the evening sky pretty much all night. And as we continue, you'll see slowly but surely the comet continues past uh, Orion's shield. And as we enter this portion of late February and into early March, it's very likely that this event will be over. So it's one shot at this. Um, I believe it's 50,000 years until this is going to happen again. So certainly not in our lifetimes, but an awesome spectacle to witness. Once again, bring your family out, show them this, especially as it enters into the evening sky into the February uh, 1st through February 14th or so time frame. We've got a lot of really cool little conjunctions going on with some of these planets and stars, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. As far as viewing this, um, at this point, they're not saying it's going to be a naked eye object yet. Uh, I really hope that it becomes one. Of course, if you go to darker skies, uh, residential neighborhoods, probably not going to be the greatest for this. If you can get to a dark area, I personally, if you check out my comment Neo wise over on Cosmos Safari's YouTube channel, my YouTube channel, you'll see my comment Neo wise video. Um, I went out to the, one of the darker locations around me, uh, a lake. And that was perfect. You know, I could actually see it with my naked eye. And as I said before, earlier in the video, this was an experience for me that kind of brought me back to my childhood with uh, the other comets in the past, namely Hale Bop for me and for many of you, uh, possibly even Haley's Comet. So really cool. I hope it gets to be exciting for you too. And if you have any questions, you know, consider leaving them in the comments below. And I would be more than happy to help answer them. Um, this is kind of a moving target. We don't necessarily always know when these things are going to pop off and become something spectacular. So definitely pay attention and make sure that you get to witness one of the better comets that we've seen uh, at least since 2020 with Comet Neowise. So I, I hope this was helpful. If this video was helpful, don't forget to hit subscribe here on the Simulation Curriculum YouTube channel, the makers of Sky Safari. Don't forget also, if you're interested, please check out my website, cosmosafari.com and my YouTube channel, Cosmos Safari, where I go into other content uh, like this. And I think you'll be interested if you like this video. So enjoy it. Let us know in the comments if there's anything you have questions about. I really hope that you get an opportunity to go out and see this with your friends, with your family. And if you have any experiences you'd like to share with us, leave them in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And most of all, everybody, enjoy and clear skies. Thanks.